Today we are covering conditional statements. A conditional statement is an if-then statement. For example, if this happens, then this happens. It shows you a series of steps. We use conditional statements in geometry in proofs. When we are trying to prove things, we want to say if we have this, then what has to follow? So let's get started. Our first term here is conditional. And we have here the formal definition, a statement that can be written in the form if P then Q, where P is a hypothesis and Q is a conclusion. So the formal definitions, as with our other definitions, they are rather lengthy and sometimes hard to read. So this is how I would write it as a short version. A conditional statement is a statement that says if blank, if we have something, then blank, then something happens. Instead of saying blank and blank, however, since we are in the math class, we use variables. We can call this our first blank P and our second blank Q. So the way the notation goes is P arrow Q. And the way we read this is P implies Q. Now let's look at the different parts of a conditional statement. The part of the conditional following the word if, we call that our hypothesis. Just like in science where at the beginning of an experiment you start with your hypothesis. At the beginning of our conditional statement we start with the hypothesis. It is, the short way I will describe this, it's the if blank part. It's the blank part. In our notation, that's the P. And just like in science, in experiment, you start with a hypothesis, you do the middle steps, and at the end you reach a conclusion. The conclusion, the part of the conditional statement following the word then, or in other words, it is the then blank. It's the blank part after the then. That is our Q. So up here is an example of a conditional statement. If you are in Mr. Castillo's class, then you are in geometry. When we look at conditional statements, we look to see whether these statements are true or false. So as an aside, all of my classes are geometry classes. So if we look at this, if you are in Mr. Castillo's class, if you are sitting in one of my classes, then you are in a geometry class. Think about that for a few seconds. All right. This statement is a true statement because, as I mentioned, all of my classes are geometry. So we're going to say this is true. So far, when we've been doing through false questions here, it's always, here's a picture, are they collinear, true or false? Or are they coplanar, true or false? We've been looking at pictures. Where we're going with conditional statements is eventually, we will be just looking at sentences that describe a scenario or a situation, and then you have to be able to tell are they true or false from reading them. We also do different things with conditional statements, move them around and do other things with them. So here's the first thing we can do with a conditional statement. We call it our converse. It's like here, converse. It's the statement formed by exchanging the hypothesis in, and the conclusion. The way I describe it, switch the if and the them. 
Now, we are not act switching the actual if and the then. The if and the then stay where they are. What we are switching is the part after the if, the P, and the part after the then, the Q. Just switch them around. The notation goes Q arrow P. Notice in my original, we start with P. P implies Q. So the converse, we switch them around. We have Q implies P. If Q, then P. So let's go back to my statement up here and let's look at the converse. If you are in Mr. Castillo's class, then you are in geometry. You are in Mr. Castillo's class, that is your P. You are in geometry, that is your Q. So if we want to switch them around, it would read if you are in geometry, then you are in Mr. Castillo's class. Now I'll give you a few seconds to think about whether this statement is true or false. If you are in geometry, then you are in Mr. Castillo's class. What this is saying is all of the students in geometry are, Mr. are in my class, in Mr. Castillo's class. Of course, that is a false statement. Now, why is it false? What makes it false? Am I the only geometry teacher here? No, you can be in Ms. Mouton's class, or Ms. Alfred's class, or Ms. Tompkins class, or Mr. Chalkin's class, or Mr. Anderson's class. So you can be in, in a geometry class, but you can be in some other teacher's geometry class. We call that a counterexample. That's our next vocab term. Counter example. It's an example that shows a conjecture. It shows the statement to be false. So going back here, if you are in Mr. Geomet if you are in geometry, then you are in Mr. Castillo's class. That is false because you can still be in geometry, but you can be in the Smoothons class, for example. Let's try one more example with counterexample. If you are a Texan, then you are born in Houston. Now, is this true or false? What this is saying is, if you are a Texan, any Texan person is born in Houston. Of course, that would be false. Because you don't have to be born in Houston. You can be born in Dallas. You can be born in San Antonio. You can be born in Austin. The key thing, however, with counterexample is we are still looking for the first part. We are still looking for Texans. More specifically, we're looking for a Texan that is not born in Houston. That is how we show this statement to be false. So for counterexample, the hypothesis has to stay true. We keep the hypothesis, but then we find a conclusion that makes it false. And we will see a lot of counterexamples this year. Alright. Next up. Our next term is negation. 
it says right here, the negation of a statement P is not P. Or the way I would just describe it is put a not in front of a statement. The notation for negation, we have two different notations. Either use the squiggly line, we call that a tilde, so not P, or we can use, it looks like a minus sign with a tail at the end, not P. For those taking computer science or are interested in computer science, you may also see the notation written like this, where it's an exclamation point and P. In computer science, that also means not P. Okay. So now let's use negation. Negation is used in an inverse. An inverse is the statement formed by negating the hypothesis and the conclusion of a conditional statement. In other words, put a not for both the if blank and then blank. So it will become if not, whatever your statement is, then not your statement. The notation for that is not P, arrow, not Q. Now let's go back to my example. Uh, I am going back to my example from my original statement. If you are in Mr. Castillo's class, then you are in geometry. Rewriting that as an inverse, it will be if you are not in Mr. Castillo's class, then you are not in geometry. Now, is this statement true or false? Okay, this is a false statement. If you are not in Mr. Castillo's class, then you're not in geometry. Because what this is saying is students that's not in my class is not in geometry. But as with our earlier example, that student can be in Ms. Mouton's class. A student in Ms. Mouton's class is still not in Mr. Castillo's class. However, that student is in fact in geometry. So that makes this statement false. All right. Class one for the types of conditional statements. Well, not last one. We have this and one more to go. We have the contra positive. Contra positive. A contra positive is the statement formed by both exchanging and negating the hypothesis and the conclusion of a conditional statement. In other words, we switch, oops, misspelled that, switch the if and the then, we switch them, and we put a not in front of both. And the notation goes, 
we switch the if and the then. So Q will now go first, followed by P. And then we put a not in front of both. So not Q implies not P. An example of that, going back to my example about students in my class. Okay, so my original again is if you are in Mr. Casillo's class, then you are in geometry. An example of a contrapositive is if you are not in geometry, then you are not in Mr. Castillo's class. Now, is this true or false? If you are not in geometry, then you are not in Mr. Castillo's class. Again, as I mentioned earlier, all of my classes are geometry classes. So, if a student is not taking geometry, then that student is not in my class. That is true. Okay. Next up, the process of using logic to draw conclusions. We call that deductive reasoning. This is also step-by-step -step reasoning. It's what we mostly use on proofs. If we have this, then we know this is true, then this is true, then this is true. That's deductive reasoning. That's different from the next part. The process of reasoning that a rule or statement is true because specific cases are true. We call that inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is where, let's say you have a problem that you solve one way, so you say, okay, it worked for this problem, this way it worked for this problem, this way it worked for this problem, it worked for the three that I tried, so it must work for every single problem out there. That in math, we do not accept that. That is not a proper proof. We call that proof by reasoning, which is not true. Because it only takes one example that, that where that method doesn't work to make the whole thing false. And that one example is what we call, again, our counterexample. Finally, our last conditional statement, we call it a biconditional. So by meaning it goes both ways, it's a conditional that goes both ways. A statement that can be written in the form P if and only if Q. What that means if and only if is a fancy way of saying both the original and the converse mean the same thing. So P arrow both sides Q. What this means is P implies Q, our original and Q implies P are converse. If you combine them, we have a biconditional. So here's an example for a biconditional statement. If two lines are congruent, then they have the same length. Let's take a look at that statement. 
if two line segments are congruent, then they have the same length. Now, is this statement true? So let's take a look at it. We have two lines, we took two line segments. We're looking at two line segments that are congruent. In math, congruent means the same. More specifically for segments, it means the same size. Or since we're talking about just lines, the size would be a length. So if two lines are congruent, meaning same length, then they have the same length. In this case, congruent and same length means the same thing, which is why this is true. If I were to do the converse, the converse would be if two lines, line segments, have the same length, then they are congruent. Again, we just said same length and congruent means the same thing for line segments. So really, this is also true in that both these sentences mean the exact same thing. Since both of them mean the exact same thing, we call that a biconditional. And we can write it in the shortened version of if two lines, two line segments are congruent, if and only if they have the same length. Alright. So these are the conditionals that we covered today. Where we're going with this is when we start looking at true-false statements, it's not just going to be here's a picture, are they true-false? We will give you statements. Here's a statement, do they make sense, true or false? Since we're since we're just starting, we'll mostly ask about statements and their converse. So we'll give you a statement, we'll ask you to write the converse, are they true or false? That's what we're going to mostly focus on for the first test or two. Late, later this semester, after we do converse, then we'll start throwing converse and inverse questions in there. And then later on in the year, Sorry for the bell. And then later on in the year, we'll do converse, inverse, and contrapositive. The reason we're doing it one at a time, where we're adding the new topics later on, is because the tendency is for students to confuse those three. So first we'll just do converse, then we'll do converse, inverse, then we'll do converse, inverse, contrapositive. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, please let me know in class. Thank you.